Welcome to Probability and Statistics. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about how to estimate population variance. So, so far um, in Chapter A, we have learned how to estimate the population mean, mu, population proportion p, okay? And now we're going to learn how to estimate population variance, which is sigma squared. Now, if I take a square root of it, I can also estimate my population standard deviation sigma. So these are the parameters, okay, population parameters um, that we talked about back in the um, beginning of the um, probability and statistic where we used our um, sample mean, sample proportion, and s sample standard deviation, and eventually expand it to estimate, okay, to estimate our population okay parameter all right so all these stuff fall back to um, things we talk about um, back in chapter one lecture video series all right so uh, the best point estimate for your population variance sigma squared is your sample variance okay which is s squared all right so to estimate variance of a population SMA variance of population is used to test like a consistency of quality when samples coming off the assembly line such as a amount of soda or water in a bottle or the net weight of maybe like a bag of Skittles or a bag of chips so a lot of times um, when manufacturer produce food okay, or water um, the consistency of what they put in the bag or in the bottle, okay, it got to be, ha it got to have a certain consistency. Um, I always use this example: a bag of Skittles. Um, you got several different flavor in it. Well, what happened? A bag of Skittles only come with one flavor. Okay, I don't think that will actually work very well. So there's a consistency when they bag. Um, a bag of Skittles, they putting a lot of um, different flavor into that one bag and so there should be a type of consistencies of every flavor okay, inside that bag. Alright, so that's why um, this is um, just an example of how we use okay, estimate, estimating population variance. Okay, just an example of it. Imagine um, you get a bottle of soda; it's only half full, and it has never been opened. Okay, that that that's not going to work out very well. So, <clears throat> testing for the consistency, okay, for manufacturing is very very important. Okay, so if we want to construct a confidence interval for variance or standard deviation, we use this thing called a chi-square distribution, sorry about that, called a chi-square distribution, okay, chi-square distribution is approximately normal, but it's not quite normal, okay, and it will actually be more and more normal as the degree of freedom, okay, increases, so for example, I got some picture here on the handout, so this is the critical value for chi-square distribution with a degree of freedom 5. Alright, so this is not really a two-tailed kind of test. What you're going to see on the table, okay, are the area to the right of your critical value. We can make this into a two-tailed um, interval, but um, what's going to happen when I do two tails the area to the right and left is not going to be the same because this is the chi-square distribution okay it's not it's only approximately normal it's not quite as normal okay as like a normal distribution okay so for this chi-square of 0 0.950 okay the alpha referring to area to the right okay so all this area to the right okay 0 0.950 we want to find the critical value for the chi-square it's almost like a z um, z score or the student's t 
axis okay now we're going to call it a chi square so if we look down the degree of freedom phi area to the right is 0.950 okay then my critical value over here on the left side will be 1.145 all right so we're going to look up some of this stuff from the table in case you find a critical value so to construct a confidence interval okay to it to construct it all we're going to do all right is follow this formula okay n minus one times the simple variance squared divided by your critical value chi squared alpha over two so this one will be the one from the left all right this one here is the one on the right which will do chi squared of one minus alpha over two okay in other formulas that we see with a z and a t value okay the area to the right and left uh, outside of my confidence interval is the same but not the case for the chi-square distribution okay so we will use the n minus one degree of freedom when we look up in the table okay I'll show you how to do this just in a minute okay so your four steps okay basically is saying we need to find all the things we needed okay from for the formula that we need got to know your point estimate your simple variance or simple standard deviation to do the standard deviation all I had to do is take a square root okay on everything that's all I had to do all right so can't use a calculator for this okay can't use a calculator for this so I got a few example here kind of guide you through it real quick so I'm gonna um, copy and paste this um, formula so I can use it just in a minute oops did I do it nope all right here we go I'm gonna use this just in a minute okay let me throw it down here all right determine the critical value so the first example I want to show you is how do you determine okay the critical value for the confidence interval so my simple size is 13 my alpha is 0.1 all right So find the critical value. So let's think about this. Your chi square, critical value chi square of alpha over two is going to be chi square of point one over two. All right. The reason I'm doing over two because I'm doing the for the confidence interval. So this is going to be chi square of point zero five. All right. So what I'm doing right now is thinking about this, but I'm not construct a confidence interval yet. So, so I'm trying to find this critical value, the one on the left. In a minute, I'm going to do the one on the right. Alright, so the area to the right is 0 0.05. So if you go to the table, okay. Uh, if I this is a standard normal, let's score, keep on going. Flip another page. This is the positive Z score. This is your critical value of T. Alright. Critical value of chi square. Our area to the right is point zero five I need to go down to degree of freedom which is <coughs> 12 because the n was 13 so it's always n minus 1 degree of freedom so 12 come all the way to okay to point zero five so the critical value will be 21.026 
kind of weird. The number is backwards a little bit because the one minus alpha over two for the chi squared of one minus alpha over two. Okay, that would be the same thing as one minus point zero five. Because my alpha over two was point zero five, so one minus it will give me chi square of point nine five. So the area <laughs> to the right is point nine five. So if you think about this picture, the entire area to the right is point nine five. Okay. Earlier, my the other critical value chi square, the area to the right was only point zero five for the area to the right. So it's, it's kind of backwards a little bit. <coughs> If you actually think about it in terms of the picture, because it's but now here's the thing though, zero is here. Okay. Zero is here, so technically the bigger number of the crit of the critical chi square is still gonna be on the right hand side. I know it's kind of backwards a little bit, you know, compared to what the formula say. Maybe the formula should have a chi square of one minus alpha over two over here, but but as long as you know the zero is actually going to be on the left side, then the 21.026 will be more to the right. All right, point nine five. I think we just saw it. Degree oil. Already that was degree of freedom of five. Well, I'm looking for degree of freedom of twelve point nine five. That will be five point two two six. 5.226 okay all right it's weird I know it's kind of backwards but you know when you put this 21 down here and get divided okay when you divide by a bigger number this whole this confidence interval on the left side will be a smaller number compared to the one on the right okay it's a little bit backwards all right, let's draw one, okay? Let's do one. Let's do the same thing as we just done. Consider the confidence interval of population deviation. So my C level is going to be at 98%. All right, sample size 16. My S, my sample standard deviation is going to be 1.3. So this one is doing for the standard deviation. All right, so let's find... Okay, let's find our um, critical value. So the, if the C level is at 0.98, that means my alpha is going to be 0 0.02. Okay, so this is going to be 0.02. All right, that means the chi square of alpha over 2 is going to be the 0 0.02 divided by 2, which is chi square of 0.01. All right, so we're going to look this up, okay? Degree of freedom, 15.01 is the area to the right, 0 0.01. Go down, degree of freedom, 15 is about right here. So that's 30.578. And we can't do this in the calculator, okay? There's no chi square in the calculator, really. All right, so I got this formula in my mind. So I just find the critical value right here. I got my n, I got my variance. Okay, which is written, as written in standard deviation. All right, chi square of one minus alpha over two. So, this is my alpha over 2 is 0 0.01, so 1 minus 0 0.01, so the, for the chi-square of 0.99, area to the right is 0.99, degree of freedom 15, 15.99, 
that will be 5.229. Five point two two nine. All right. So let's plug into the formula now. This is about construct the confidence interval for standard deviation. So I gotta still take a square root of this thing. So let's see. My lower bound and is sixteen minus one times 1.3 squared divided by all right, chi squared of alpha over 1 which is my 30.578 so this gives me the variance so if I want to estimate the confidence interval for standard deviation I got take a square root of it and my true population standard deviation will be right here in the middle of these two numbers so the other one is going to be square root of hold on a minute let me just I can just copy this oh sorry So the only number I'm changing is down here, which now will be 5.229. Alright, so let's see where is my true population standard deviation, okay? So second square root of, I can go ahead and say that's 15. 15 times 1.3, don't forget the square here, divided by... 30.578 close parenthesis round to one decimal place so that's about 0.9 <coughs> <coughs> sorry alright so the true population standard deviation is from 0.9 to I'm just going to do second entry, changing that 30 to a 5.229. Okay. It's from 30 to 2.2. 2. 0.9 to 2.2. 2. So the true population standard deviation okay, is about 0.9 to 2.2. 2. Okay. Alright, so that's how we construct the confidence interval. So graphically, okay, graphically, for my population, for, for my chi-square distribution, okay, it's going to be from 0.9 to 2.2, .2, something like that. And within it is your 85%. Excuse me, that was 98%. Okay. Maybe I need to stretch out a little bit more. Alright, so maybe from here to here is your 98% confidence interval. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's try another one. Just gotta watch out what will they want me to find. Construct the confidence interval for the population variance. So this number is already a variance. <coughs> okay, this number is already a variance. I'm still gonna do 0.98. Alright, so so my two chi square. My two chi square should be um well, excuse me, my my two alpha over two will be the same, but the chi square critical value will be different because um, degree of freedom will change. So I'm looking up chi square of 0 0.01. The other one, the one minus alpha over two. 
0.99 so let's look up degree of freedom n minus 1 which is 26 all right 26.01 so that's 45.642 Forty-five point six four two. Point nine nine. Twenty-six point nine nine. Twelve point one nine eight. I'm gonna put this in the formula. So I got this formula in my mind. Let's plug it in what I know. N minus 1. So I'm doing the variance for this example. Okay, so I'm just going to do N minus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just say 26 now times my variance. S squared is just 6.2. I don't have to square it again. Earlier I squared it because that 1.3 was only the, was the simple standard deviation. Okay, formula called for squared. This is already six point is already squared, so I don't have to square again. Divided by the forty five point six four two. All right, my variance, true population variance sigma squared will be somewhere in between. So it's twenty six times six point two divided by. The one minus alpha critical value twelve point one nine eight. Right, let's type it in. Forty-five point six four two. I'm going to one decimal place, so the true variance is from three point five all the way to. Oops, sorry. Second entry. I'm going to change the back end number divided by 12.198. Okay. We're on to one decimal place. That's about 13.2. Okay, so that's how we do for the variance. All right. I got another example where we will type in the data. Oh, no, 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 that's another one. All right, the thickness of 85 randomly selected pencil lid were found to have a variance of 2.86. Okay, so. Oh, I'm missing a page. That's the reason why I'm missing a page in my handout. That's the reason why I was confused. All right, this one, the thickness of 80. Five, right then we select it. So my N is 85. We're found. And the variance is 2.86. So this 2.86 comes from the sample of 85. So that's my variance. Sample variance S squared. 2.86. Construct a 98% confidence level. So my C level. Uh, is 0.98 construct a 98% confidence interval for the population variance okay the thickness of the lid all right so I'm doing the same thing as what I did earlier except now I just got to extract my information all right so with this formula in my mind the chi square alpha over 2. If the C level is 0.98, again my alpha is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.02. So I'm doing the same, I'm looking at the same alpha, chi square of alpha over 2, which is going to become 0 0.01. And the chi square of 1 minus alpha over 2, that will be 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0.99. All right. This time I'm going to look at um, degree of freedom, 84. So 84. If you go down a little bit further, it begins doing an increment of what, 10 at a time. So all we got to do is find the closest one. 
Okay, which is actually 80. Okay, so there's no 80. Well, I'll take it back. It might be 90 because I'm doing, well, 84. I'm doing 84. So the closest one is 80. All right. 0 0.01. 0 0.01 is next to the last column. So that will be 112.329. chi square of 1 minus alpha over 2, the critical value. Um, the second column, 0 0.990. For the degree of freedom, about 80, 53.540. Okay, so, um, so now once I find a critical value, Okay, I can go ahead and type it in and find the answer. All right, so I don't have to do that again. I'm sure y'all know how to do this. Just remember now, this s this 2.86 is already squared. Okay, so you don't have to square it again. So I believe the final answer, if you want to check it, the lower bound. Okay, it's going to be from 2.14, two decimal place all the way to your upper bound for your variance 4.49 okay all right now this example i do want to show you this all right i got nine rods construct a 99 percent confidence level so n is nine all right Concern 99% confidence answer for the population standard deviation. Okay, for the nine rods. So how do I get the population standard deviation? Well, what we're gonna do is put this nine data into our um, into our calculator, so we can actually figure out the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. So. I'm a, so what I'm looking for is the simple standard deviation of the nine rods. Okay, I'm trying to estimate the population standard deviation. So go by the stat edit. Okay, I'm gonna type in these nine numbers. So here's my another number, stat, calc, one variable statistic, just under L1 only. My s so what am I looking for here? Sample standard deviation. Okay. So my sample standard deviation is about 0.24887. We can, I can take that many decimal places. 0.24887. Uh, eight, 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 nine, excuse me, eight, eight, nine. All right. My C level this time is 99%. So what that tell me is my alpha, okay, the area outside the 99% confidence level alpha is only 0.01. So when I do the chi-square, I'm going to put this down here. When I do the chi-square of alpha over 2, that will be 0 0.01 divided by 2. Which is going to be chi-square of 0 0.005. So for the 1 minus alpha over 2, the chi-square is going to be 0.995. Alright, so let's look it up. Degree of freedom is going to be 8. 0.005. Area to the right, 0.005.
degree of freedom is 8. So that's 21.955. So degree of freedom 8.995, 1.344 is my critical value. Alright, so let's put it in. Okay. So this one is about population standard deviation. Okay, and this is my simple standard deviation. It it is not square, so I gotta square it here. N minus one would be nine times this number point two four eight eight nine I'm just taking a several decimal place okay so that'll make me more accurate divided by the twenty one point nine nine five All right. I'm gonna take a square root of it because I'm doing standard deviation So my population, my true population estimation will be somewhere in between. There we go. The only number I change is down here when I key it in, which is 1.344. My calculator, second square root, nine times point two four eight eight nine gotta square that then divide by twenty one point nine nine five close parenthesis alright so it's about two decimal place about point one six a true standard deviation okay of the of the the length of these rods Okay, I can plus or minus from 0.162. Remember standard deviation plus or minus so much. Let me back it up. 1.344. I'm gonna delete that one. So by 0.64. Okay. So I can plus or minus the length about 0 0.16 to 0 0.64 so my true standard deviation true population standard deviation is somewhere in between alright I'm gonna show you how to do this last one I know I'm, I missed it in my in my notes so I'm gonna go to my notes and get it real quick uh, let's see where is it This very last problem, um, we got to use the formula sheet again to estimate Alright, I'll show you how to get this the answer 39. The minimum sample size needed to be 99% confident. Sample standard deviation is within 30% of the population standard deviation. So on your table here, okay, I'm going to go back up. There is one page on your formula sheet. This page right here. Okay. Sorry, a little bit crooked. Alright. Table 8.3. Minimum sample size for estimating variance. The other one is estimating standard deviation. So first thing first, you need to know which one of the two, okay, you're going to look for. We're trying to use, if you read carefully, the 99 confidence, okay, that the sample standard deviation. So I'm looking for sample standard deviation. So that will be using table 8.4 within 30%, okay. So I want... I want my standard deviation S, my simple standard deviation within 30%. So that was within 30%. I'm 
I'm doing a 99% confidence level so I will use this number so the minimum simple size is about 39 so there's no formula here to compute that 39 we just look it up in the table okay alrighty so just a little bit of um, talking about how we can estimate the population variance or population standard deviation okay testing for the consistency that's what this section is all about all right thank you for watching